In this video, we will be talking briefly about mechanisms of reactions. Here is a very short introduction into the very elementary ideas for writing mechanism of a reaction. The first question is, how do you predict if a reaction involves a mechanism? In order to answer this question, we will need to know about law of mass action and rate law. If the molecularity of the law of mass action and the order of a reaction determined from the rate law are different, we can safely say that there is a mechanism involved in the reaction. We have to differentiate between the law of mass action and the rate law. The law of mass action can be written from a balanced equation. The statement goes something like this. The rate of a reaction is directly proportional to the product of the concentrations of the reactants raised to their appropriate coefficients. So in this case, we're going to look at the reaction between A and B producing C and D. Lowercase a and b are the coefficients of a and b. So if you write the rate law, rate is equals to k into concentration of a raised to the coefficient a times the concentration of b raised to the coefficient b. Or we can say the order. I prefer to call it molecularity when we are talking about law of mass action because it's coming from the balanced equation. In this case, it would be A plus B. So if I say molecularity, it also implies order of a reaction based on a balanced equation. The rate law is always determined from an experiment. So it's an experimental evidence that we have here. Uh, the explanation can go like this. The rate of a reaction is directly proportional to the products of the concentration of the reactants raised to their appropriate coefficients, which are obtained from an experiment. Or if you write the same equation, A and B giving you C and D, the coefficients are A and B, but when you write the rate law, rate is equals to K in the concentration of A raised to X, times concentration of B raised to Y. The value of X and Y have to be determined from an experiment. So in this case, order N is equals to X and Y, and that's the difference between law of mass action and rate law. Rate law is always determined from an experiment, and law of mass action can be written using a balanced equation. So the rate law here is rate is equals to K into A raised to X and B raised to Y. N is going to be referred to as the order of a reaction. And when we compare it to the law of mass action, we're going to use the word molecularity over there. Now, if the order of a reaction and the molecularity of a reaction are the same, there is no mechanism involved in the reaction because it's a one step reaction. On the other hand, if the order of a reaction and the molecularity are different, then a mechanism is involved in the reaction or the reaction takes place through a series of elementary steps. The different steps that are involved in the reaction are called elementary steps. Here is an example for you. For the reaction between NO2 and F2 giving you NO2F. If you use the law of mass action and write the rate law, rate is equals to K into concentration of NO2 raised to 2 and F2 raised to 1, because the coefficient of NO2 and F2 are 2 and 1, the molecularity of this reaction is going to be 2 plus 1 is equals to 3. The order N determined from an experiment for the reaction is found to be actually 2, which means the molecularity and the order is different. So in this case, we have to suggest a mechanism for the rate of the reaction. That's where we are going with this. So the rate law in reality is rate is equals to K in the concentration of NO2 raised to 1, F2 raised to 1, order is 1 plus 1 is equals to 2. Normally when you write the rate law, if the order or the exponent is 1, we normally don't write it. Just being an introductory video, I'm just writing it there for this time. So now we will look at a suggested mechanism. There are two elementary steps in this reaction that we have suggested. The first elementary step is NO2 plus F2 gives you NO2F plus F, which is the slowest step. 
The slowest step is usually referred to as the rate determining step of a shot I have written RDS. The second elementary step is the reaction between NO2 and atomic fluorine which gives you NO2F. Now we know that molecular fluorine is actually a stable substance. So if you try to make molecular fluorine react with nitrogen dioxide, it's going to be difficult because you have to break the fluorine-fluorine bond. And hence, that reaction is going to be slow. For that reason, the first step is considered to be slow because the energy for required for breaking the fluorine-fluorine bond is required. And that step is a slower step. Therefore, the rate of formation of the product depends on how easily we can break the bond. For that reason, the first step here is considered to be the slowest step or the rate determining step. If you have atomic fluorine, it easily reacts with nitrogen dioxide. Therefore, as soon as an atomic fluorine is formed, it very quickly reacts to form NO2F. So, the second step is considered to be a fast step. The second step can only take place if the first step produces fluorine atoms. Fluorine here is also considered to be a reactive intermediate. It's produced in the first step. Reactive intermediates are always products in one elementary step, and they will be consumed in the next elementary step. So in this case, first step produces fluorine atom, second step consumes it, and when you add the two reactions together, or two elementary steps, we get the overall reaction, which is a net equation, 2NO2 plus F2 giving you 2NO2F. And we have already stated that the rate law is always written from the slower step or the rate determining step. In the rate determining step, we have one NO2 and one F2 molecule. Therefore, the rate is equal to K into NO2 raised to one, F2 raised to one. Therefore, order of a reaction one plus one is equal to two in this case. Once again, the terminology used in this video, RDS, is rate determining step, which is also considered to be the slowest step. F minus, based on the suggested mechanism, is considered to be a reactive intermediate because it's produced in one step and consumed in the other. And there are two steps, and each of these steps are called elementary steps. The final analysis. On adding the two elementary steps, the overall equation gives the original equation. So this is the first condition that is to be satisfied. The second condition is, the order of a reaction is consistent with the suggested mechanism. The rate determining step gives the reaction a second order, which is the observed value for the reaction. In the second or the slowest step, the order of a reaction is 2. Is 1 plus 1 is 2. Therefore, the mechanism that is suggested is a valid mechanism, and we would say the mechanism is acceptable. So every time you're writing a mechanism for the reaction, these are the things you have to look for. Look at the molecularity and order. If they are different, you have to suggest a mechanism. The first condition to be satisfied for the suggested mechanism is the two elementary steps when added should give you the original equation. The rate determining step should have the same order as the overall order of the reaction. If those two conditions are satisfied, the mechanism is acceptable. If not, you have to reject the mechanism. So in this case, the mechanism is acceptable. That's it for now for this short introduction on mechanisms of reaction.